Wait, here's video. Any questions for you? From you, Nate, anything you got? I'm good. All right, here we go then. Locked, loaded, and ready. Locked, loaded, Three, and ready. Two, one, you're live. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show. Dr. D, how are you today? It's another day and another beautiful day in paradise it beautiful, is. Beautiful. I just driving over here. We're doing some extra shows. Uh, Dr. D and Les Carroll have been so gracious to offer me some time out of my studio time to make up for being out for a few weeks. Um, and I was driving over here. It's uh, four o'clock on the Pacific and the Southern California Pacific Coast time. Um, beautiful beautiful drive i mean the wind is just the air is just beautiful it's you've just been right. stuck probably in the studio all day doctor i Duba. got out for maybe five minutes and walked across the street to grab a couple things to drink come back and uh it was just really nice to hit that cool breeze as i turned the corner it yeah. was just the ocean oh, so close oh here. man here are the studio on santa barbara street in santa barbara california it's beautiful uh nate Najar is our special guest. He, he joins us again yeah. back to the show. Good and to have him it's back. been too long. Yeah. And, but I love where, where, you know, we've people that, uh, artists that come on the show, guests that come on the show, it almost feels like family. And I oh, don't yeah. say that lightly. Absolutely. You know, it feels like we make these great connections that are lifelong. Although we're all busy, we're all off doing our different things. Um, when we get back together, it's just nice to see a, a friendly and a, fa a friendly face and someone that I admire so much. Indeed. So let me um, let me do a little introduction, a proper introduction for Nate. It's been a couple of years since Guitar Virtuoso Nate Najar has joined us with one of his magical guitars. <laughs> that was back. God, I don't even, it's a few years back. It was in season four and we're in season nine, as you know. So it's been quite a while, uh, a couple hundred shows ago. And he brought us on that show, his album, such a beautiful, beautiful album, Under Paris Skies. And this is absolutely true. Uh, I probably listen to Under Paris Skies a couple times a week with my morning coffee or when I need to bring down the stress level in my office, I play under Paris guys. The music has this effect on me, this, this calming effect. It, it's almost like a take me away quality where it takes me. Uh, I mean, uh, almost every time it's uh, kind of embarrassing, but I start thinking about this really great trip I had in, uh, in Europe, my first trip to Europe and uh, sitting in Paris outside the train station at this little French cafe on the corner. Uh, for those of you that have traveled there at the train station, you probably know which one I'm talking about, although I, don't, I can't recall the name. And this is kind of a cafe with, there was a person uh, shucking oysters outside for the passerbys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the oyster station right out there on the sidewalk. And we sat on a little... A table with a glass of red wine before we were boarding our train and we bought a couple extra bottles tucked into paper bags for the overnight journey to venice it also reminds me we had this great evening sun setting uh, up at the old fort we jumped the wall and sat in the grass and had uh, cheese and salami and baguettes and uh Bruschetta. Uh, we watched the set, setting sun sparkle off the roof of the Duomo. Music has this quality of, uh, you know, bringing back these memories very sharply, almost as old movies in my mind. So I've been looking forward to a new album by Nate Najar, and now my wait is over. And lucky for you, so is yours. Guitarist Nate Najar reimagines seminal Bossa Nova album, Jazz Samba Pra Sempre, set for release. Actually, it's already, well, no, it hasn't, June 17th. I, I, for mm -hmm. some reason, I thought it was released. I must be thinking of the uh, single that we're going to play in its entirety at the end of the show. So look forward to that. Uh, we might even be able to talk Nate into to doing a little guitar work for us on air here. The track that we're going to play in its entirety is Samba These Days. So look forward to that at the very end of the program. We'll talk a lot about the whole album here with Nate in a moment. 
The Albich pays homage to 1962 Charlie Bird and Stan Getz groundbreaking recording. The recording features Nate Najar playing Charlie Bird's classical nylon string guitar and cover art by abstract expressionist painter Olga Alvizu, whose work appeared on Jazz Samba. Becky Bird, Charlie Bird's widow, says of Nate's beautiful guitar work, there is no doubt that there is a piece of Charlie's soul in Nate's mind, heart, and fingers. You can't get a better, a better endorsement for the album than that, in my opinion. I referred to, in the beginning here, uh, the uh, first interview we did with Nate. It was in season four, if you'd like to go back. It's episode 184. So, uh, you know, if you, you're, you're going to love Nate. He's a storyteller. Uh, he's a great musician, a great artist, and uh, I think you're going to want more. <laughs> and if you want to check out that uh, the, the, the previous album under Paris Skies uh, or the interview for that album, uh, please go back. I told Nate, uh, and this is true also, of, I, I just got the album um, gone again ahead of time. And so thank you for that, Cheryl and, uh, for, and Nate. I got the album before the release, I've uh, only had, since I just got it, the pleasure of listening to it all the way through once. Can't wait to get back to it. But the wait, I've got to tell you, is so worth it. This is the kind of album that you keep in your playlist for a lifetime. It is the kind of album that underscores an evening with friends, making any experience a memory. It is the kind of album that plays as you enjoy a great bottle of wine with a lover. It plays in the background of a great meal. It becomes a mood when it's just you and your headphones walking on the beach. Nate Najjar is absolutely a treasure. Welcome back to the show, Nate. Man, with an introduction like that, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Why are you so good to me? <laughs> oh, I love you, man. I love your music. Um, one of these days, we will get that that uh, that drink together or a nice meal when, when you come through L.A. or Santa Barbara. But it's really, going to be really, sooner than you think. It's heartfelt. Oh, good. So do we have we have a tour we can talk about? There you go. <laughs> an upcoming tour, an upcoming show. I hope. Well, no, not that. But um, oh, <laughs> but uh, it's sooner than you think. I uh, man, I miss Santa Barbara. I like it out there. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. Where do we find you today, Nate? Um, I'm in my studio in St. Petersburg, Florida. This is our uh, this is our little studio. This is my control room. And uh, so this is my little mixing station. And, you know, I set up the lights a little. I tried to clean it up as best as I could. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's actually this place is a, well, you can kind of tell this place is a massive dump, but it works. And we recorded jazz samba here. There's a little room <laughs> over there where I played the guitar and the saxophone player was in the other one. And the drummer was like about 10 feet from where my left arm is. Um, and you see where the keyboard player was. So, you know, uh, the bass player was sitting where the camera is that I'm, I'm speaking to a camera now in, in your in your stead. And that's where the bass player was. And we made that record here. So, you know, we're in our little studio. And this uh, is ground zero. We get we get the yeah. uh, so check out the YouTube uh, interview. You'll see that up on our on the Jeremiah show YouTube channel. Uh, we've got you can see everything Nate's referring to. I think it's pretty incredible, Dr. D. And Dr. D must get a studio envy, although his studio is no. not not bad at all. Yeah, I uh, will tell you that I have already you get to see got, all these great yeah, studios. <laughs> uh, I've already sold your guitar and the keyboard on eBay. Twelve dollars <laughs> for the guitar, sixty five cents for the keyboard. My goodness. Jeez, it, you know, and Nate, Nate, Nate are, uh, <laughs> and Nate Jar. right there. Come on, man. He's worth <laughs> way, a lot more than that. You got taken. <clears throat> but people know. say you're going to have to pay me to take Nate. So yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't know what the deal is there, Nate. Yeah, you know. But anyway, it's but, beautiful what you've got there and what you can create. And it's the philosophy I've lived by. You work with what you have until you get what you want. I wouldn't call I call that uh, uh, Nate. I wouldn't uh, call that a. A dump at all um mm -mm, mm -mm. you only see one corner of it well <laughs> i don't see all the 
<clears throat> the the bottles and the Dorito Beer bags and, the, and <laughs> whatever it is that you love to snack on in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. No, uh, this place is great. We get a lot of work done here. We did uh, we did a lot of Daniela. Well, the stuff sound here. is good. You've got you've got a really nice sound in that room. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we uh, we worked hard on those parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can yeah. see those soundboards back there. It uh St. Petersburg cannot you can't complain if you're in St. Petersburg, right? You're Oh, it's brilliant. We're a little peninsula on a peninsula. You know, it's uh we um we live in a little downtown uh, apartment building and uh it's us and, and us and the two kids, right? And so we've got this gorgeous view, big picture um, you know, sliding glass doors going out over and we're on the uh seventh floor so we we see most of downtown we could see air, airplanes taking off from the municipal airport we see tampa bay the i go downstairs and walk to the coffee shop at the end of the block yeah. the a theater that we play at often is right across the street it's oh, wow. really uh uh we we've got home yeah we, we're pretty we're pretty fortunate mm. you know yeah. and that's the way it ought to be you ought to be able to live close to where you and I don't want to say what you're doing is work. I know you don't believe that it is. It's not a job because you love doing it. Well, I love playing the guitar. The rest of it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I like talking to you guys. I wish I had a scotch with me while we were doing it. But uh, you we'll know. wait. We'll wait, Nate. That's no, what I you want to go get one. <laughs> no, I mean, all of us, you know, yeah, like in a joint or something, you know, but, well, uh, you know, but this ain't work. But, uh, you know, but there's plenty of work. <laughs> I don't want to leave you, uh, make you feel left out, but 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 uh, Doctor D and I are having a scotch right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do I like you? Four o'clock, five o'clock in St. Petersburg, right? Not seven o'clock. What time is yeah, it? Yeah, it's seven o'clock. You know, yeah. So yeah. we're drinking on your time, although we're still at four o'clock on our time. That's right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> it's that old saying, right? Yep. Well, before we talk about this album and the making of the album and the incredible guests that you've got that join you and the backstory, all that great stuff. You know, since we've last talked on air, at least uh, a lot's happened in this world. I mean, it, and if I, the way I look at it, I mean, it, in all the years I've been on this earth, the last couple of years have probably had the most, um, so many changes, so many, um, different things that have happened what has your life been like Nate what have you been up to and how have how have you navigated and created beautiful music in this crazy world we're living in well that's a loaded question <laughs> um the good stuff this is a good this is a feel-good show you don't have to we don't have to talk no it's this. all good I fell in love okay. that's what happened all right I fell in love you know, and hearts were broken and uh, and other people fell in love and things happened and uh, and here we are. And that's that's the short version. But I think you, know, we, you we, see the we, smile. You see this the grin on this face. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's you know a, I mean? that's being in love. Nate's in love luck, huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what that's what's happened. I mean, there's you know, there's specific things that have happened that sure. uh you know, but yeah, but that's what happened. I fell in love, and then you got some new music. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, how how does I haven't been in love in a little bit, but last time I was, I remember. I honestly remember look like everything was brighter outside, and all the colors were sharper. I mean, I know this is a chemical effect, probably in your brain, but. Uh, does that affect the music falling in love? I mean, it, it sounds, that's a probably a simple answer, but well, how does you know, it you, affect you and music? And being well, a, you know, uh, Frank Lesser, I think it's Frank Lesser, had a great tune back in the fifties. Um, and uh, was it Frank Lesser? Gosh, I'm losing my mind. Anyway, give me, give me the um, title. I'll look it up for you. We'll, we'll verify. Actually, you know what? I think it's Learner and Low. Is it from My Fair Lady? It might be. I've never been in love before. Da, 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 what a great tune. And uh, anyway, I'm just, you know, when, when you fall in love, you know, there's all the dopamine and the, you know, the the drug effects that happen. Uh -huh. You know, the, you know, love is a drug and all that. But I'm talking way beyond that. 
I'm talking way beyond that. And I'm telling you that I fell in love. And what has happened is, what has happened is that it's all there to just pick from. It's all there if we just listen, you know? Mm-hmm. All you all you got to do is just sit still and listen. Don't actively listen because then you're not going to hear it, you mm-hmm. know. But it's all there to pick from. So then, you know, I had I I, I wished I made this record ten years ago, and now I'm so happy that I didn't make it ten years ago. But ten years ago was fifty years of jazz samba, and so it was. Uh, it seemed like a like a good anniversary date. Uh, I missed it, and uh, so at sixty years, I didn't want to miss this and. What serendipity that everything comes at the right time. Yep. Yep. Because when you when you hear it, then you can then you can grab it. You know, it's like any. It's uh, everybody, every single human on this planet has this experience in one way or another. Whether it's with a recipe or whether it's with uh, hitting a golf ball or whether it's with uh, something you know, some very difficult task or that, but every, every human has this experience at some time or another, but all of a sudden when you can become aware of it, you know, I don't know how it happened. All the only thing I know, the only correlation I got here is that I fell in love. The only correlation I got, but what I'm telling you is that everything's there for all of us, you know, and you just pick it out and put it together. And this record came together the easiest any record I've ever made came together. And this record came out and it's the first time I've, there obviously there's always something that, you know, you prefer to have done if I wish I played that better. I wish I played that differently. I wish that sound, et cetera. But when you look at it from a completely objective point of view, me, when I hear it and I, I can honestly say, yeah, that's actually, if anybody made that record, that's a, pretty nice sounding record and it's the first time in the entirety may I, entirety of my career that i can look at that and really say wow i feel good about this oh that's great yeah you know you it's, should you should wait till you hear daniela's record that you're getting that one soon but you in know august? just august yeah in and august? that but but you know the point is that one we did we did that one right after we made this one it's just you know I'm not Sisyphus. The, the boulder ran over Sisyphus and it's going down fast. <laughs> I just hope that we're really high up. So we got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think that, first of all, congratulations for being in love and, and finding that special person. Uh, I love to hear it. It's great. Um, you can feel it. Your, your energy is great and you can hear it in the music. Do you find, was this, uh, I'm being in love, creating this album, all the feelings that go with it, that's just euphoria. Uh, did, did it help you? And this is no pun intended, honestly. Did it help you come in, become in tune with your artistic side, the music in, in any different way? Did it accelerate it or... Ex- Com- completely in every way um i feel like some levels of layers of insulation between me and the source some level of layers have been removed and uh i'll give you a really good example when you have a conversation with me you just speak you're not thinking about what words you're going to use, what type of language you're going to use, what spe- how specifically you're going to conjugate them, put uh, assemble the sentence, et cetera. You have uh, so much experience and so much uh, internalized in how you communicate verbally that you just speak and you've thought about the concepts, but, and on some level, maybe you've thought of execution, but you're not thinking about, I mean, I'm saying, but you're not thinking about, I'm not thinking those are the words I'm going to use. It's just, we're just speaking, right? Right. So when you play music, you know, here, 
uh, somebody gets a guitar. Okay, let me learn a C chord. Here's a C chord. Somebody should tune this guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was hey, my job. Even you tuning a guitar sounds pretty good <laughs> to me. That's his next album <laughs> called Tuning. But, you know, so, still not in tune. So there's a C chord, right? So you learn that first. And then every time you go to play the guitar, you pick it up and you go, okay, so where do I put my fingers, right? So now I don't think when I play a C chord, where do I put my fingers? That's long past, right? But the source is, you know, I have this, I have this uh, theory. It's not a theory. It's a lot of people share this vision, this idea, this aesthetic. It's just a way to communicate. A lot of people share this, you know, but, but I have this idea that the universe, everything that, that is, is like a monolith, right? You right. know, we're not, we're not a salad bowl. We're not a, there's no components. It's, it is, right? So, you know, speaking about music, music is just one aspect of that which is. And, you know, Chick Corea used to say all the time, every composer has one song and everything that you write is an extension or a, a um, elaboration of that motif. And I think it's really true because what it really is in our own way, all of us have ways that we're kind of more in tune with I call it the source, but with the universe, with whatever, we have all different ways that we're in tune with it, whether it's a chef or whether it's an athlete or whether it's a musician or a poet or a lover or, you know, and there's people who have talent in many different fields. Uh, but where it is, where it's coming from is we're, you know, we're connected to that and we pull it out. Bach, think about everything that Bach wrote and all the length there's a very specific way that he pulled that out and put it down. And everybody who's playing music or making art or making a recipe, I keep coming back to that or any of that, anybody who's doing that is, uh, is connecting with the source. And then the way that it is expressed is just in the way that us as the physical individual existing in this earthly environment relates to that information, but the creation of it and the doing of it, that's the conduit, so to speak, right? So back to your question about falling in love. Uh, what happened is layers between me and the source have been removed. And so I feel that much more connected. There's less resistance. So when I play music, when I make music, when I hear music, when I think about music, and I've discovered it's not just music, it's really ex expanded into kind of many other things, lots of things I see, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so it's uh, when this stuff happens, there's more happening and less thinking about it happening, if that makes any sense at all. That's beautiful. No, that was a great, great description of being in love and how it affects your music and, and the source. I also really like, Nate, uh, your, your awareness, uh, your idea, and being conscious of listening, uh, you know, and, and, and being open to what comes in and and what's what's the possibilities? What's possible? Um, I end the show every time with with a saying: communicate, but listen more and evolve. And yeah. it's really about that listen more part, that middle. And it's not a reference to the show, although it could could be taken that way. Yeah. It's to it's to uh, you know what we strive for in the show is to listen and to tell tell each other's stories. And I think we can all learn from those. Um, you know, it's about the music also, but it's also, it's about the person that creates it and the perspectives. Um, then well, you know, the music and, you know, the show, the, what you do, everything that you do, the music, everything that I do, all of it, the stories, it's all who we are, you know, full stop. It is who we are. You know, the way the trees are pruned out on the street in front of somebody's house. That's who we are. All of it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. 
Ain't that a thing? <laughs> Love it. All right, we got to take a break. Um, I wanted to tell you, you were right about the song I've Never Been In Love Before. The composer is Frank Lesser. Okay. You had it. All right. So All right. before we go to break, mm -hmm. I want to tell you how you can, uh, and now can they pre-order the album, Nate? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. It's at Amazon. It's anywhere you can buy a record. It's at, uh, it's on my website, natenajar.com. It's everywhere. Which, is there a site that they may, that you make more, or do you want to say that? I don't want to put you in a bad spot with any of the. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Anywhere that's most convenient for the consumer is what's best for me. Uh, for the consumer i just said consumer can you believe i said that <laughs> and he, you know it's like because we're, we're constantly in these discussions about um about streaming music and so forth and so on and i always say that you know the the the, the discussion that musicians have uh against streaming uh my response is always it doesn't matter because streaming is good for the consumer and if it's good for the consumer it's not going anywhere that's why that language is in my head. But no, yeah. back to back to buying the album, Jazz Samba Pra Simpli. If you'd like a hard copy, CDs are uh, are available now. Anywhere that's convenient for you to get a record, you can get it. Amazon, any record store, any CD store that still exists, everybody's got it. Um, vinyl LPs, uh, we're doing the pre-orders for vinyl LPs. They are shipping at the end of summer, so not long off. Vinyl, I love it. Vinyl, I... You know, 180 grand uh, audiophile vinyl. <laughs> Thick ones, good ones. Uh, beautiful. Uh, I can't wait to, to uh, I, that's what I want to pick up. I want to pick up one of those. So let me give you the information. I'm not going to be able to say it as cool as Nate does, but I'll do my best. Guitarist, Nate Najar reimagines seminal Bossa Nova album, uh, Jazz Samba Pre Sempre. It's set for release. This coming June 17th, oh, we got uh, less than 10 days away. So pre-order now. Nate just gave you all that. You can get it anywhere, anywhere you buy an album. This album is so special and it pays homage to the 1962 Charlie Bird and Stan Getz's groundbreaking record, Jazz, uh, excuse me, Jazz Samba. The recording features Nate Najar playing Charlie Bird's classical nylon string guitar and the cover art. And there's a story behind it. It's really a good one. Nate's going to tell us it when we come back from the break. It's by abstract expressionist painter Olga Albizu, whose work appeared on the original Jazz Samba record. Check out Nate Najar on all of his socials at Nate Najar. Okay, go do that. We'll be right back. All right. That was beautiful, man. I love that. Oh, man, thank what you. A good oh, opening. What a, what a pleasure. You know, the last time we did this, it was on the phone. And it's, you know, I didn't want to just do like a laptop Zoom thing like uh -huh. people do. I wanted to, you know, so like, I, like it's like NBC Studios in here. I'm staring <laughs> at a, like a good camera. I, there's a screen above the camera that I got you on. And then there's a boom mic right out of the field of view. There's the big light. I got a little monitor so I could see what I look like. You know, I mean, this is, I got my <laughs> in-ears in, art. you know, I got my in-ears in so I can hear you. I mean, it's the, but. Um, you know, what I, we got to do is we got to get you to, to play like a, the Johnny Carson theme song sometime <laughs> da, da, <laughs> in your da, studio. Da, da, <laughs> We're coming back. But now. It's great because I'm look, I'm talking to you and I'm looking right back. at your face, you know? Yeah. This, this is so much, you know, instead of sitting, a if I was on the phone with you, I'd be pacing around my living room. Mm -hmm. But, you know, instead I'm sitting in a chair and I'm staring at your face and talking right to you. It's really hip. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, you, you know, we're, we're on the laptop here in the studio, but um, that's my... My end goal is to to have a studio kind of like you're doing there with all of that, the whole, you know, great lighting, great setup, and uh, that will happen soon. Um, but oh no, this is a mishmash. You should see what this place looks like. But it, I just, I mean, I, I got it literally wired up right before I logged in, you know, but uh, but anyway. All right. Well, you, any, uh, I love all that. That was such a great opening. So let's go to the album when I come back and some of these stories. Um, you know, uh, of the, Stop uh, me this, whenever you need to. Okay? No way, man. This you is know. good. This is exactly what I was talking about. That uh, when I hear a musician's interview, typically I'll go, 
okay, I didn't really, I'd rather not know who they were or whatever, you know, I want, this is because it's just flat, you know, uh, press release facts. Right. This is what I'm trying to get is what, what we just did was that was the real Nate. Okay. And then to me, if I hear that interview, I am intrigued. I want to hear his music. And I, I now I know who, you know, who he is. That That's what you just did. It was awesome. I love it. Oh, good. So, and I'll never, I need to listen more. That's my goal as well. So you get more, I think, without asking too many questions. Um, you know, I want to definitely set you up, but that's, I, I think we I'm get a better. Up. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, let's, let's get a mu as much time as we can on, on air here or on recording. So here let's we come go. back. Three, two, one. You're live. <laughs> Richard was ready, obviously. Well, welcome back to the Jeremiah show. Uh, you don't have to cut that if you don't want Dr. D. I, I love you trying to keep me on track. Richard wants to eventually get home and have dinner. She probably hasn't had breakfast or lunch today. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I thank you so much, Richard, for doing this special hour with uh, our special guest today, Nate Najar. Uh, well, thank you, too. Yeah, Richard puts in a lot of time here. I appreciate him. I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun because you meet all kinds of great people. I mean, just our last interview that we did uh, just the other day uh with another uh musician cj cj oh, uh yeah he just uh, released the new skunk jeff skunk baxter yeah. another great guitarist wow. great stuff and yeah. so you get to hear the stories of what i like to call because i've been doing this for over 40 years the olden days you know hey, back when we were using why uh, uh wax cylinders <laughs> and uh you know uh, that kind of stuff and it's just but it's it's like there were days i want to go back to those days it was so much fun because it was it was right there in your hands and the vinyl the same way oh and the smell oh yeah i yeah. miss that i miss the smell of every one of the different mediums i miss the the vinyl yeah because i used to sit there on the on the floor i remember with my parents albums and look at them for hours almost like those were my children's books you know and i'd look at the jackets and the back and the photo art and the, the fonts and all that stuff and just study that i just loved it mm -hmm. and the smell and then it went to uh, tapes next for me, cassette tapes. And they had, do you remember that smell when you'd crack that open, that oh, yeah. plastic off of that? Oh, I used to repair them all the time. <laughs> I'd take them apart, take the screws out. If they didn't have screws, I'd have to pry them apart and then figure out, okay, I'll have to use some scotch you, tape. I, to I'm hold just them having this picture of Richard with, with all the <laughs> all the tape wrapped around him and all his face and his head and trying to put them all back together. I was like a kid, like yeah. pulling that stuff out, you ever, that tape uh, out. Yeah, and and by the way, do you ever, uh, Niger, uh, uh, Nate, do you ever remember uh, uh, Real to Real? We used to use these 10 inch pancakes. And oh, yeah. I had one of those suckers. What do those smell like? Come apart. Oh, same <laughs> stuff. I had, had one of those come apart. And it took me three hours to, to make sure it didn't get twisted or knotted, which I never understood how in the world you could get a knot. In yeah, something. That's right. They would get a little nod. I was like, are you? And then, it, but it took and me three it hours to re-school. And then it would skip on that part. Go, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> probably, probably, I hate to say this, but I know we've got young listeners out there and they're probably like, what the what? hell are you guys talking about? You How guys, about, and, you, the and they're saying, actually, the they're saying, you're, you guys are old. Yeah. We're dating <laughs> ourselves. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the background before we talk about how you've reimagined it, and I want to, that's a whole topic I'd love to get into here on how you reimagine and how you do something like that. With, um, but talk about, first of all, if you don't mind, Nate, um, Charlie Bird, talk about Charlie Bird and then Stan Getz and then how the album came to be. And it's a Grammy award winning album and it would really put them on the map. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Let's start with, with Charlie Bird. Yeah, so well, it all starts with Charlie because what Charlie did was he was a Washington D.C. guitar player. He, I never met Charlie. Uh, I knew, uh, I know a fair amount of his family, and um, uh, I'm very friendly with a fair amount of his family. Uh, and his brother, who was the bass player in his group for a very long time, he plays guitar and a little bass on the original Jazz Samba album. Joe Bird, the brother. Um, but Keeter Betts was still playing bass in the band at the time. Uh, but um, Joe and I played together a fair amount before Joe's death. I really, actually, I really miss him, to be honest with you. He's, um, I think about him often. Joe was great. And, um, but so Charlie was a guitar player who was drafted in World War II and served in the infantry. 
And so when Paris was liberated, he when he got to Paris, you know, he was a guitar player. He grew up, his dad owned a country store in Chuckatuck, Virginia, which is kind of the the Norfolk um, general area now, the the, the uh, metropolitan area. You know, it's been absorbed, but it was, you know, a little country town, a little country village, really. Dad owned the general store. And Charlie learned how to play blues guitar from the guys who would come in to buy stuff at the general store, you know, the guys hanging out on the porch and stuff. So when Charlie was in Paris, when Paris was liberated in 1944, he immediately went looking for Django Reinhardt. He found him. He got to jam with him. And it's hard. it was hard to find Django because Django would say he was going to play somewhere and then he wouldn't show up and things like that. There's a, there's a great <laughs> little stories venue. about that. About yeah. <laughs> there's a great little venue on the Eastern Shore of Maryland called the Mainstay. And Charlie was one of the first acts to ever play there. And it was very late in his life. And so the kind of main lobby area of the venue is called the Bird Room. And it has lots of Charlie's personal photographs and things like that. Um, and there's a great photo of him and Jen. Charlie's in a U U.S. Army, you know, General Infantry uniform, you know, with his private stripes and everything. And... Uh, and uh, he's uh, it's him and Django Reinhardt just posing for a photo with guitars. It's brilliant, you know. So when Charlie came, the whole point of this story, when Charlie came back from the war, he said, I'm only going to do what I want to do in my life from now on. I don't blame him. You I know? said that last week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him one bit. So. So anyway, he's he uh, moved to New York. He was a guitar player. He was a, he could be a jazz guitar player. A uh, roommate of his showed him a Segovia record. He said, "What's that? That's classical guitar. Wow, this guy's playing Bach on the guitar. It's incredible." Moves to D.C. GI Bill starts studying classical guitar with Sophocles Pappas. Uh, Sophocles Pappas had a great school. Washington D.C. was a guitar town. Uh, but Charlie's first love was jazz. Brilliantly, and the thing is, it was organic. You know, he was like, he he realized I didn't, huh? I, w I wanted um, to ask guitar before yeah. you go on with that story. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Washington, D.C. was a guitar town. Now, you, now that I think about it, a lot of people that we've talked to have, have come from D.C. Or, or played there. Why was Washington, D.C. a guitar town? That's interesting to me. I think it was because of Sophocles Pappas. He had the, the Pappas' guitar shop opened in like 1930-something on m street and it just closed a few years ago i used to go there all the time when i played at blues alley um and uh, it was on connecticut avenue m street and 18th street where they all converged there it was up on the second floor and uh charlie bird taught guitar lessons there for a while in the late 50s and early 60s but they roy buchanan was there danny gatton i mean this is why washington was a guitar town because they were guitar <laughs> players through there you know um it's interesting. Yeah, it's like, you hear, uh, I think of Washington, D.C. as so many things, politic, known for politics, great restaurants, uh, uh, all that kind of thing. But I, I wouldn't think Guitar Town. And it's yeah. neat, neat to kind of hear and think about that history. Is yeah, it it's it's a Guitar great town? Music town overall? It's, it not, it's not a guitar town any longer, but it is still a great music town. It's still a great well, music town. It, thank you for allowing that uh, question yeah. of your train of thought. I hope I hope you can get back there. Yeah, um, no, I'm good. Well, you know, I ramble anyway. No, but uh, no. yeah, but so yeah, so Charlie, uh, he basically said, "I'm not going to be a concert classical guitar player. I started too late. I love jazz, I love blues, but I love playing this box that is different from a plectrum style guitar that we are kind of do in this country, et cetera, et cetera." And so he says, "I'm just going to combine all my stuff," and it happened very organically. It was just. It was natural for him to, so, you know, he'd go give a concert. Uh, actually, at the time, they, they were just joints. They were clubs. He was playing, uh, he played at a place called the Showboat Lounge, which was at the um, the basement, Columbia Road. And, um, and I, it's what's Adams Morgan now. And uh, he became so popular that they were able to institute a quiet policy and so forth. And it became a real listening room. And that was kind of the start. And because DC is a, politics town what happened is you know this is the late 50s and so you know the cold war is heating up and mccarthy and uh, you know red scare and all this right? all the good stuff is what you're saying so the united <laughs> states government gets this brilliant idea 
gets this brilliant idea. This is fascinating stuff. I'm, re- I'm not really answering the questions because I'm just going off on all kinds of tangents, but it's fascinating information. The U.S. government gets this brilliant idea. The State Department will send jazz groups all around the world and will say, give concerts, just put the American jazz musicians in front of as many non-Americans possible to show, because this really shows democracy and freedom and American values and woohoo, you know? And it was kind of brilliant. Uh, and also it was brilliant that uh, the State Department recognized uh, that the government, that somebody in the government rec- really right. recognized the cultural value of this distinctly yeah. American thing that happened. I mean, they were pimping it out, but you know, a lot of musicians got a lot of benefit out of that and the world got a lot of cultural benefit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what's really interesting is I've got a whole big archive of Washington Post articles, PDFs, you know, the, and um, you know, going back to the 50s. And they, you know, they, some of them talk about Charlie's State Department tours and, uh, you know, you, uh, and one of them, it's so fascinating because they talk about how this particular writer, and I can't remember who it was, they said that uh, it's unfortunate that the State Department chose something as lowbrow as jazz to re- represent yeah. the high point of American <laughs> culture. Wow. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> But it's it's all uh, I, uh, not I shouldn't say always, but it it has something like that tag to it, you know, for a long time. Jazz, right? I mean, it was yeah. it was kind of underground, and it was um, it all although, although it to me at the forefront, it is an American. Um, it's the, the American, yeah, it, you know? it, exactly, and it uh, brings all the cultures together and all that. Yeah, it's it's just so much it's jazz, is so much, yeah. Yeah, it's really, you know, that's a great story. I didn't know that. That's a, yeah. I learned something. I love this. So on the State Department tours, you know, they go. I mean, Duke Ellington had a, a one of Duke's most famous records. It's the Far East Suite. That was a State Department tour where they went. They were in China and Mongolia and Nepal and India and, and all I, they all of it. John Lamb, one of my dearest buddies, um, uh, he's the, the bass player on that record. He was the bass player on that tour. Um, but so back to Charlie and his State Department tours. He went to South America a lot. He went to Asia a lot. He did, but these first initial ones in the late fifties were often in South America, all over Mexico, um, you know, Honduras, they'd go to Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, everywhere. And um, one of the things that he liked to do is he liked to pick up sheet music everywhere. He yeah, he would buy sheet music and records. Uh, you know, today we can get on Google, and if we can go on YouTube. We can find. I mean, the information's out there. It's brilliant what we you know what we have access to. But even when I was a kid, it, you know, I wanted to, the first time I wanted a Django Reinhardt record, I went to the CD store and I had to ask him for Django Reinhardt and he had to pull out the book. And we had, so even though it was very accessible, it's still, you know, it was three weeks before I ever heard a note Django played. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now you can have it up before you can finish saying his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't even need to know how to spell it. And, uh, you know, so you think in the late, I believe it comes in handy for me all the time, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the late fifties, early sixties, you know, a phone call from uh, Washington DC to New York was a pain in the, you know, was yeah. difficult. So, it, so when he, when Charlie would travel, he'd go, Oh, let me get some sheet music, buy some records. What are people doing here? What are the composers doing? What he was, he was a musician. He was a guitar player. That was, that's what he was interested in. He bought guitar music. Um, meanwhile, he's also doing, you know, official functions. He's got to go to state dinners. He's a guest of honor. He's this and that. But the bass player and the drummer don't have to do anything except hang out. So they're going and finding a joint to listen to some guys playing and listen to what are the guys doing. So Charlie's buying the sheet music and saying, what are the people doing? And the guys on the street, the guys in the band are saying, what are the guys on the street doing? Good combo. Do we lose Nate? And then, oh. and they're going to meet guys and learn. Oh yeah, they, yeah. So they, so so you know, they come back from South America and you know, they do a couple of these trips and they come back with all this stuff. And uh, he start Charlie starts incorporating it. He's listening to Joao Gilberto sing on this record. And the guys in the band were hanging out with guys in Brazil and being shown how to do some of this stuff. And so Charlie's at his gig at the Showboat, you know, in uh, Columbia Road, and he's playing, you know, Jobim tunes and Joao Gilberto things and. And the people are really digging it. So that's how this music got here. That basement 
on 18th and Columbia Road is the first place in North America this music was played. I wanted to set up a concert there, but the the people who were running the venue uh, pre-COVID, post-COVID, because it, it became a record store and a bar, and, and they even kept his name. They called it the Songbird Music House and Cafe. It was really sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but they, post-COVID, they moved from that location. They moved premises. They're in another space, and so it's it's an empty storefront now which is kind of disappointing, but, uh, anyway, but that's how the music got here. And then, you know, he and Getz made the record and, you know, the rest is history, as they it's say. An empty storefront, it sounds like a perfect place to, uh, to premiere or at least uh, play, play the record, even if it's empty, uh, you know, yeah. get somebody, some event coordinator to put that together. That, that sounds like a, I'll fly out for that. That'd be great. Yeah, well, really. Uh, Nate, we've got to take another quick break here. We're talking with Nate Najar. It's been 60 years since the release of Jazz Samba, the 1962 landmark album by Charlie Bird and Stan Getz, who earned Grammy Award for Best Jazz Performance. Then they launched, uh, uh, excuse me, not then, but that, this, this album, and Best Jazz Performance Grammy Awards launched Bossa Nova in the United States and predicted the best-selling Gets Gilberto by two years. We're going to come back with Nate. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to talk about his album and how he reimagined it, the process, and a little bit more. Excuse me. I, I need some water. So I'm going to take a break uh, real quick here. Can you cut for a minute? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I want to come back and promote, though. All right, stand by. Let me get you queued up here. Hold on. Let's see where we're at, just so I know where we're at. Cut for a minute. Mm -hmm. Scrabby Awards launched Bossa Nova in the United States and predicted the best-selling Gets Gilberto by two years. We're going to come back with Nate. Let's pick it up there. We're okay. going to come back with Nate. Three, two, one. But before I let you go, uh, let me give you the information here. If you're intrigued by this album, if you haven't heard this album, uh, I really encourage you to pre-order the album. If you're listening to the podcast months after the album is out, go get it. Guitarist Nate Najar, reimagine seminal bossa nova album, jazz, samba, prosempre, set for release June 17th, 2022. If you're listening to this after again, it's out there. So I encourage you go now, get it after you finish the interview. Um, in the meantime, though, you're listening to the entire album or, or not the entire, but seven of the songs from the album. We're about to premiere in its entirety the uh, first single from the album, which is uh, Samba D's Days. Really great. Coming up. Um, let me see here. Uh, uh, find, uh, I'm trying to give you out all the information real quickly. Nate Najar on social, Najar on social media. Let me do that over. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Richard. All right. Hang on one second. Um, yeah, cut all that. Samba D's days. Really great. Coming up. Uh, okay, right there. Pick it up. It's coming up. Coming really up. great. One second. Coming up. What, oh, yeah, one coming second. up. Pick up with coming up in three, two, one. At the end of the show. Oh, no, you start with Come, coming up. You said coming up. No, Come, no, no. I said start with up. start with coming up. Okay. Three, two, one. Coming up at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that. The album pays homage to that 1962 yeah. Charlie Bird and Stan Getz groundbreaking recording, Jazz Samba. You can find Nate on all the social media sites at Nate Najar. It's uh, last name spelled N-A-J-A-R. We'll be right back. All right. All right. Clear. Uh, uh, let me find my spot. Okay. So I warned you, didn't I? No, man, that is so, <laughs> I'm telling you, it just gets better and better. And uh, it's just like all your music. <laughs> you can find Nate. Uh, no, really. A -A those are the, that's right exactly what I was looking for, what you're mm -hmm. doing. Uh, that whole last segment, I learned probably three or four new things. And I think, okay. again, that brings that album to life. Yeah, Let's you know, talk. I mean, this, this shouldn't be about marketing, you know? Yeah. Well, this is the best way to market is like, you know, fall in love with the story. Yeah. yeah I know you need to go, Richard. No, so no, no, no. We're, fi we're fine. We're fine. Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the J uh, Jeremiah Show. We are spending the hour this 
hour with our friend, long lost friend. We haven't seen him in a few years, but he has uh, been out there producing some very great music, falling in love and living life. The album is Bossa Nova album. It's a Bossa Nova Jazz Samba, Pra Sempre. It's released this June 17th. So go and pre-order now anywhere you get your rec- your albums and your records. Um, Nate, welcome back to the show. So we talked about, uh, if you're just joining us, Nate, I'd go to the podcast and, and, and listen to the rest of this interview. It's really fascinating. I learned a lot about um, Charlie Parker and Stan Getz and, and Bossa Nova. A little bit about the uh, groundbreaking record Jazz Samba, which won a Grammy Award in uh, it's 60 years. This is marking the 60 year release. Jazz Samba won the 1962 uh, Grammy Award for the best jazz performance. Uh, now you've reimagined this album, and I love this idea. That idea that you've reimagined and and and, uh, but also you know have paid homage and tribute to the to the wonderful album that came before so much so that Becky Bird, Charlie Bird's uh, widow says of your beautiful guitar work, that there is no doubt that there is a piece of Charlie's soul in Nate's mind, heart, and fingers. I just, I love that uh, endorsement of the album. Let's talk about how you reimagine it, Nate, uh, the musicians that have joined you, the um, uh, Daniela Solid, Soledad, uh, who sings on two tracks. we got a lot, lot to talk about the album. But before you answer that question and tell me, do me a favor and describe for me the uh, the the guitar strings. You, you use a special type of guitar string. What does that add to the album? What is that? And oh, you even well, used uh, the amp from 1972, I believe it was. Well, well, no, it's not that it's a that it's like a, a special type of string per se. I, so they're nylon string guitars, and it's nylon, just. Yeah. In, in North America, it's less common. In North America, we use a steel string guitar, usually play with a plectrum, sometimes with the hands, and and it's uh, it's a different orientation. Uh, Charlie uh, played a classical guitar, uh, Spanish guitar, and uh, so that that's what I use. They, they they were originally gut strings, like violin strings, and in the '40s, uh, Andres Segovia met with the Dupont Company, and they did kind of sorted out the nylon filament strings, which are much more consistent than, you know, animal gut. But it's just a different, it's a different way of playing the guitar. I play with my hands, you know, I, I approach it like a classical player, but exactly like Charlie Bird, I started with it too late to be like a concert classical guitar player. And I'm at heart, I'm a blues player, to be honest. I mean, I, I call myself a jazz guitarist, but at heart, you know, all I want to do is I want to do okay <laughs> you know remember i told you at the beginning of the beginning of the show i told you that uh chick korea used to say every composer has one song so yeah. i found daniela the other night i said my song's blues and g that's who i that's who i am i am blues in g you know <laughs> and uh so anyway, yeah so it's blues and g and in and in <laughs> outside of playing you know kind of latin styles where that would normally be used um uh, you know, in in jazz and in uh, kind of contemporary music, it's uh, it's just not a sound that we use that much in North America. It's used a lot if you're approximating a flamenco sound or doing a flamenco sound, which I don't do any of that. I just I don't have it. <laughs> I do. I have to do something else. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for. Uh, I, I needed. I, I always. I was imagining something, and I'm. I'm not a guitar player, obviously, but I. Yeah. I, I, I just. But, it, it's. It's. Um. It's important for the sound to recreate the sound of that album, though. No? Well, that's the instrument that I play. I play the same instrument that Charlie did, and it's you. you the, the nature of of what the strings are and what the box is and what it does. It's a. They're completely different instruments. They're tuned the same way. The notes are in the same places, but they are completely different instruments. The timbre is different and everything about what you do with them. Um, but I did play Charlie's own guitar on the record. I played, um, I have his, uh, um, Becky gave it to me uh, about, about 10 years ago. Uh, I have his Ramirez. It's not the guitar he played on that record. The guitar he played on that record is not findable at the moment. And 
I'm not sure. I know which guitars he owned at that time, but I'm not sure which one he played. Um, but uh, the one of his that I have, it's a very, very good sounding early 70s Ramirez. And uh, Charlie got it when in the in the late 60s, Andres Segovia switched back to the Ramirez from he 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 played a Ramirez early in his career and then in the 30s he switched to a Hauser he played a Hauser up until the late 60s and then he switched back to Ramirez and Jose Ramirez the third made Segovia a very specific guitar it's a, the box is bigger the um the neck is bigger I nearly called it an arm because it's an arm in Portuguese they mm -hmm. call it the brasso but we call it the neck um but the because Segovia was a massive guy. I mean, he had sausages for fingers. So they made the guitars bigger. But when Segovia switched back to the Ramirez and uh, Jose Ramirez III made him this specific model, basically every classical guitarist on the planet started playing the Jose Ramirez III guitar. Everybody. Christopher Parkening played one. Lee Rittenauer got one. Charlie got one. So every, so that's the reason why the Ramirez is so ubiquitous is because in the Segovia started playing it again in the late 60s and the Ramirez factory was had been around long enough and had tooled up enough that they had I mean they had so many luthiers working there in the in the 70s it's unbelievable for a handmade high-end luthier classical guitar to, I mean they they could have had 50 60 luthiers working there at one time I'm, I'm exaggerating I'm just making this up but the point is they were cranking out guitars and that's why there's so many Ramirez guitars out there today but yeah, hey, it, I played uh, I played Charlie's yeah. guitar on the record. That's all. That's that's, that's, that's a pretty cool one. fact. That's it's okay. yeah. When now when I listen to it, that's I, I not that I would know the difference, but it's it's going to be neat to think about that. Um, oh no, we got another break. Mm -hmm. We're just oh, having man. too much too much fun. So many so many great stories. I talk too much. I'm sorry, but you uh, know, hey, it's a talk show. That's what you're supposed to do. Nate, um, is it true that uh, you heard this album and this inspired you to do what you do? Like it, it was it wasn't jazz samba but it was a charlie bird record charlie it was, bird. It was a riverside record called um uh the guitar artistry of charlie bird and i heard I, and after i heard that i mean the first notes he plays taking a chance on, on love and it's just uh, uh. and i just you know i heard it and all of a sudden uh I said, wow, you know, the drummer swing in and Keeter's playing the bass. I said, wow, that's awesome, you know? And that's what I want to do. And so I went and got every Charlie Bird record I could after that. And Jazz Samba was the next one. And it was, you know, it was ubiquitous. And uh, it all began. Here you are. Charlie Here Bird. you are. Here you are. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we got to take this real quick break. We'll be right back. The guitarist that we're speaking with, the amazing guitarist, Nate Najar. He's, he's reimagined it the uh, seminal bossa nova album jazz and it's jazz samba pra sempre set for release this june 17th you want to pick up or pre-order your copy now it is the uh, album paying homage to the 1962 charlie bird and stan gets groundbreaking recording jazz samba okay we'll be right back and where you can find nate you can buy it you can pre-order the album anywhere you get an album but where you can find nate as uh Real simple on all the social handles. It's at Nate Najar, N A J R. We'll be right back. Okay. okay. So we don't have much time left. What are we at, Rich? Uh, and I want to make sure you give credit to all your guys and your your artists. And that's fifty four minutes so You're far. Fifty four. Just already? content. Just, just content. content without yeah. music. Yeah. So gotta, to make this fit, um, we've, we're on Century Talk last about five new radio stations, and and they play a full hour. So to make mm -hmm. this fit, we really don't have much time left for, for our radio. We've only got 45 minutes. So yeah. we've got commercials on right. our two radio stations in town. So we should probably, we don't want to cut anything. So we probably better, and we're going to have to. Um, you're, you're, there's no, yeah, yeah. there's going to be some stuff that'll be cut, but it'll still be good. Yeah. I promise you. Um, oh, no, I'm happy with that. I, You know, doc, Dr. D, man, I am really grateful for, you know, for this. I'm, and I'm sorry that I held you guys up a few minutes. Oh, no. I really not not a worry. Well, why don't worry. we just do one more segment yeah. and try to keep it at five to seven? I know mm -hmm. that's, yeah. Um, and I know I, I really would love to have you talk about the chemistry between you and your musicians, the your musicians on the album. Uh, if there's a tour coming up or any places you're going to play this album. Nah, you don't play, worry about any of not, that. 
Okay. Um, and uh, what was oh the 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 album cover art? If you want to tell that story, and that's gonna yeah, so that's I'm pretty much shut up. I'll just introduce you back and and um, talk, and then you can just get into the giving everybody their due, if you want, if that's what you want to do. And any any highlights of the album that you're and man, I'm sorry, I wish we had more time to talk more about it. No, just bring, you know, bring it in, close it however you see fit. I'm I'm good. You know, we've we're we're doing this getting to know you thing with uh, right. you know, this is this is the way an interview is supposed to be. i have you know, I'll talk like this all day with anybody. This is great. You know, uh, oh, you know, Chuck Red played drums in this and he's a good drummer and the sex I nobody cares. Yeah. You know, I mean well, I, I, mentioning the names is important because they 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 need the you know, everybody needs the contributions mentioned, but the sure you know you, you just you, you can read the press release to see who played on it mm -hmm. okay well you do it any way you want the last uh, seven minutes it's all you and then we're going to play the um the single in its entirety after after that and richard by the way maybe no uh tgs intro on this because it's a little loud compared to the music and i don't you know the one we do usually with the countdown Oh, I think it's a little cheesy for his okay. music. <laughs> sure. No, no, no. That's that's fine. Whatever you want to do. Okay. I mean, I would have read I that in you your notes. Would have drunk, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we would, go. So no problem. All okay. right. Here I'll we go. In the notes. Three, two, one. You're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah show. I want to give over uh, the entire rest of this interview, the time that we have, because we don't have much. It's been so fascinating with Nate and Najar. I want to give it to him. Uh, so I'm going to shut up and I want you to it, tell us about this you put together quite a uh, list of who's who musicians for this album. And uh, it struck me that chemistry has got to be such an important thing. You can feel the chemistry. You can feel the love, Nate Najar. Uh, you can feel the love in his life, the, the experiences that he is um, you know, enjoying right now. It comes out in this album. And it was a great album as it was. He's reimagined it with some great musicians. Now I'm going to shut up, <laughs> Nate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so I, I, shut I, it I, up. I got huh? <laughs> I, I got I, I to tell you, Jeremiah, you know, um, just just real quick. Speaking of all the love, there's a lot of love in this room right now because I am so grateful for you and Dr. D to have me on and take the time to talk about anything and everything. It's it's really uh, means a great deal to me, and you know I'm grateful for for that. Uh, so thanks, guys, really a lot. Well, the same, my friend. Uh, the uh, the guys on the records, you know, I mean, there's there's nobody, there's no one else I could have made this record with. Uh, not a single change. There's no one else I could. I mean, I could have made the record, but it would have been a completely different record. Um, I'm gonna I'll start with Chuck Red. Uh, Chuck is a drummer who is a very, 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 very fine musician. And um, he, um, he's been putting up with me since I was very young. Uh, it's been nearly 20 years we've been playing together. We've played a lot together. We've made a lot of records together. Uh, we just played together last week uh, at a jazz party in, uh, in West Texas. Uh, there was a, the longest running jazz party in the world. And uh, and we, we we were both there. And we did a couple sets together. It was really wonderful. So, uh, but Chuck was the last drummer in the Charlie Bird trio, and he was with Charlie for about twenty years, uh, up until Charlie's death. So, even though he was um, still in diapers when the original Jazz Samba record was made, uh, he was Charlie Bird's drummer. And so I'm really uh, I'm really grateful to have him included any time. And like I said, we've been playing together for so long. We just you know, we, we do the, tele, that, that, that thing that musicians do. And let's see. So Herman Bernie plays bass and Herman is one of jazz's great bass players. Uh, probably the most well visible gig that you might've seen him on is he was with Freddie Cole for a very long time. The great piano player, vocalist, Freddie Cole. Freddie just left us last year. Now that I think about it. Um, uh, Herman is just such a masterful musician. And then on top of that, he has Keeter's bass. Uh, the, so the exact same bass that Keeter Betts played on the original Jazz Samba record, Herman played right, right where I'm pointing in my studio, five feet in front of my toes. Uh, Herman played Keeter's bass on our Jazz Samba record. And then uh, Jeff Rupert plays the tenor saxophone. And uh, Jeff is... 
uh, Jeff is a treasure. He, um, we've been friends a very long time. We've played together on a number of gigs, a number of concerts, his shows, my shows, other people's shows. Uh, we, we've done some recording together. He is a lyrical tenor saxophonist, unlike any other lyrical tenor saxophonist. And his motto is, I'm man enough to play pretty. And <laughs> He does. Uh, it's, I like that. I do too. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, Jeff never plays where he he never plays to say I'm Jeff Rupert and you need to hear me. Instead, what he says is, "I got something to give you," and that's really the only way any of us want to play music. That's how I feel about it. That's how Daniela feels about it. I'll get to Daniela in a second. Patrick Bedison plays the Fender Rhodes. That that one right there. And um, and the original jazz samba doesn't have any piano on it. Charlie Bird rarely used a piano player because uh, the p the dynamic of the piano and this and this instrument, uh, an electric guitar can do a can fare a lot better with a piano player than one of these. That's my feeling. I generally don't use a piano, but a Fender Rhodes is like a big electric guitar, and the timbre works beautifully with. A classical guitar with an, with well with any acoustic guitar the timbre is just really they blend very nicely and I thought that it was sort of a it's certainly not contemporary but so, sort of an update and maybe more of a familiar relatable and yet kind of original sound it gives the record a little grease a little funk it gave it a nice aesthetic quality to, to include the Fender Rhodes Patrick Bettison is an Englishman. He lives here in town. He plays in Daniello's band. We don't go anywhere without him. He's brilliant, brilliant musician, great chromatic harmonica, a wonderful bass player, good guy. And, and then uh, last but not least, the absolute love of my life. The, uh, I tell her every single day that she is a goddess, uh, but Daniela Soledadji. Uh, it's that's how it, that's how we, it's pronounced in Portuguese. Daniela Soledadji. If you were to write in English, it would say Soledad, uh, with an e on the end. Boy, Daniela yeah. Soledad. <laughs> the way I mispronounce it. The, Daniela is see she's she's everything. She is the monolith. She is love. She's understanding. She's and uh, you so know you're talking about all the way through. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> just you know, listen to the. Go listen to her music. She's got she's got a record coming out August fifth. Pretty world. It's it's it's. I don't even know what to tell you. It is just listen to it. But you world. listen to the two songs she did on the, the two songs that she sings on jazz samba para sempre, and it's transportive. It's an smile on his face, Doctor D. Oh, while, no. talk, while he talks you know? about it. <laughs> it's, it's it time stands still. It's just like it's a conduit, and there you are. You know, that's what it's supposed to be. That's what any of it's supposed to be. That's what we all seek. So, you know, that's the, that's jazz samba. Wow. What a great, what a great hour with you, Nate. I just, I love the, uh, the imagery. I love what's going on. I love the music. All right. So we unfortunately say goodbye for now, but uh, it's not goodbye forever. It's just. I'm grateful for you. Awesome grateful for you thank you so much my friend thank you for saying that i appreciate that really i am we really do appreciate you and um and this album i will appreciate for many years as i said it's one of those albums that you will keep with you for a lifetime just like the your last well i don't know if that was the last one but under pair of skies i just loved thank you okay nate um enjoy the evening there and and uh your beautiful home uh with your your love and with your music actually gonna, i'm locked in the studio and i got a deadline when we uh, when we hang up i got a mix to do turn everything off <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna tell you one more time <clears throat> excuse me where you can get the album you can get the album everywhere that's where uh everywhere you get an album uh you can pre-order it now if you're hearing you go Go on streaming and pre-save it or, you yeah. know, hard it or favorite or whatever, because the algorithm responds when you do that. It helps me, you know, yeah. and, you know, if you're already on streaming, just go do it because it, it, it really good point. It gets the music out there more. The more people who who engage with the music, the more the, mu the computer algorithm puts the music out there. 
That is such a good point. I'm glad you bring that up because we all get on and we listen and we enjoy it. And we, you know, you forget to follow or like, especially, you know, on Spotify and all these streaming services, it just takes a second, but it means so much for all the hard work that you and your, your, your great band of musicians have put together here or for any artist out there. Um, please do that. I think that's a, a, a nice thing we can do as human beings. And especially if you enjoy it, which you will, I am telling you. Um, okay. So here is, you've waited all hour. You've listened to the music. We've given you teases of all the music from the album. Oh, now we're going to listen to Samba these days. Uh, is there anything you want to set up about this song, Nate? Uh, as no, it's, it's one of Charlie's tunes. Charlie wrote it. And it's it's a charming, fun, cute little tune. It puts a smile on your face and it makes your foot tap. <laughs> okay, so enjoy. And uh, let me send you to uh, Nate's website. It's Nate Najar, Najar excuse me, N-A-J-A-R, uh, NateNajar.com, as well as all his social media, same, same name. Nate, thank you, my friend. Gosh, thank you so much. Thanks, Dr. D. <laughs> you are very welcome. Thank you for the music you produce. Hey, man, Thank we you. Do what we can. All right. Enjoy. We're en enough talking. Now listen to some music. Um, here it is. And don't forget to communicate, but listen more and evolve. Have a great evening, everyone. Great day. Okay. And before we let you go, mister. Hit me. We want to get a soundbite, uh, a sound, a voice drop, so we can play it. A uh, little short, little thing that you introduce yourself. You oh, know, great. you know, I'm uh, Duke Ellington, and uh, I have a new album coming out, and so on, and so on, and so on. And you're listening to uh, some show coming out of Santa Barbara, the Jeremiah Show. That's what you want to say. Okay, so to confuse them. I know. All right, yeah, so I'm going to leave it. Drop your name, the yeah, album. There you go. Uh, there you you go. know your website or where they can find it if you like, and then exactly. and you're listening to the Jeremiah Show. All right, Richard needs to go home. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremiah Show. It's not like on any. It's just and you're listening to the Jeremiah Show. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you got it. So All something right. like my name's Nate Najar. Uh, my I have a. Uh, my name's Nate Najar. My new album is Jazz Samba Pra Sempre, and you're listening to something like that. Yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah. got it. It's basically a promo for the album. Okay. We'll drop in other shows mm -hmm. that got will it. continue okay. to, uh, you know, and we'll be on the um, podcast site so they continue to promote the album. Get less room. That okay. probably sounds okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, here we go. Let me put this thing back where it was. And but Nate, let me just whoop. say something real quick. Sorry, you're standing up next to the mic, but we, I, I could also use the vi the video one as oh. a. As a, like a, you guys, well, in that case, I'll just do it like I was. If you got, you know, like an Instagram or whatever, you yeah, guys, you can, got it. I'll give it to you and Cheryl. You can share it as well if you want. Great. All right, are we ready now? <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure we get all, you know, everything. We oh, that was good for thinking Nate, for Nate. So that's really good. I, I understand. He promotes his brand right. Yeah, just be sure also put in your credit card number and your pin, will you please? <laughs> all right, make here we go. Richard Dugan. Hey, that's right. Make it out to B and uh, put the decimal point way over there. Three. Two, one, you are, so nope. Sorry. Cut us off, Richard, so there's just Nate. That's what um, I'm Nate. going to do. I mean, turn off your video. Oh, okay. Nate, we're just going to bow out so that it's only you on the video. So All we right. can use this as a promotional. All right, you want to turn your video off then? I know, I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> video settings. How do I turn it off? Um, how do I turn this off? Oh, just put the lid down. Oh, my God. Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, you can still say your names though. That's all right. No, yeah. you can't. No, see, I I'm just to be like you. You will see. That's exactly what you'll see. You won't see what you're thinking. You're gonna see. Got it. All you see is Nate. That's all we want to see. Nate, are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I think we're ready here. Richard, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go get a sandwich. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. You're live. Hi, I'm Nate Najar. My new album is Jazz Samba Pra Sempre. And you're listening to the Jeremiah Show. Unbelievable! Awesome. Un Is it okay? One take, Nate. <laughs> One take. I, oh, I think that will be a perfect little clip hell. for for everyone. Sorry, Doctor D, but we got it right. We want to get it right here for this gentleman. Um, hey, Nate, do you want me to dedicate? So that's who you were talking. That's who you're in love with. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I didn't know the, the that backstory. Um, but I didn't know if you wanted to mention her that way. But let's. Uh, do you mind if I dedicate? I'll dedicate 
the show to Charlie Parker, Stan Getz, and Charlie Bird. Charlie Bird, sorry. At least I didn't do that on the show. Yeah. Um, well, you I got it in my head, and then it was there. What's yeah, that? You can remember it's Bird with a Y. Yeah. That's the difference. Mm. Just think of Birdland, okay? Just think of Birdland. I know. We're building Birdland in Santa Barbara. Right. Are you really? So you will, well, yeah, well, I'm working with Johnny, the owner, oh, and we're bringing it out here. Uh, so you'll have to be one of our regulars. We'll have to get you on a, on a tour out here. Well, you know what you're really going to want is you're really going to want Daniela. Just wait until you get the record. You're going to understand. I produced yeah. it. Wait, you're going to understand what I'm what I've been babbling about. I mean, so, you, I you already understand. I, I hope you guys can come back for that. I'd love to have you back. Yeah, we'll, you know, talk about it. You already understand, but anyway, just yeah, I'm so happy about that. With that's going to be, I, we love Santa Barbara. It's going to be great. Yeah. So, so we'll be able to say when we hear that album, that's absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> okay. Is that what you're saying? All right, let's let everybody go, All especially right. hey, you, Richard. Yeah, you. Right. You, thank you so we're, much, we're, man. You are very welcome. Thank you for your time, and uh, stay. Uh, I don't know, cool in Florida. I'm working on it. All right. And now right. Jeremiah uh, now has a blue streak. Uh, now I'm a blue streak. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Bye, bye Nate. Right, See you, Nate. <laughs>